So we're at our meeting. Is the uh, Swan Village from Monday, 2020. Call to order. Neil, we can hear about every third word. Every, every third. Are you hardwired, Reg? No. You might want to be. Hold on. But this top. See if she can hear you. Any better? Hear a reg. Yeah. The opening of Elizabeth, you you still there? Yep. Can you hear me okay now? Yep. Good. So I basically just opened the meeting and uh, everybody in the audience here, bear with us because this is a new territory we're in. So um, first order of business is we're gonna say a uh, Pledge of Allegiance, Rises Pledge of Allegiance. Hold on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the next item on our agenda is the agenda review. Does anyone have any changes, revisions to the agenda tonight? I do. Uh, the Okay, for the audience, we're not gonna deal with number nine on our agenda because we don't have any updates for our ordinances. Other than that, the agenda stays the same. Item number four this evening, public comment. I have public comment. Yes, Betsy. Hi, I'm Betsy uh, Fournier. I'm here representing Rise Vermont. Um, I thank you for having me at the meeting this evening. Um, and I just kind of wanted to touch base. Um, I was at your meeting, I believe it was October to talk about the Capital Parks Fund. And I wanted to see where you, at, where you were at with that on your budget, as well as we had talked about um, possibly hiring some staffing for um, parks infrastructure and to see kind of uh, some infrastructure changes in your parks around, um, you know, not just mowing and grooming and, you know, regular maintenance. So I just wanted to touch base on that um, and see where you're at budget wise. And if there's any influence we can offer I think Reg would like to address that. We have talked about it. And I think he and I were talking this morning. Uh, or if you want to wait for the budget. No, we could, I mean, we could address it a little bit right now, just to the fact that uh, for the parks item, we did add an extra $10,000 to that. And uh, we included, uh, two part-time FTEs for the summer instead of just the one. So the $10,000 that you put in your parks budget, is that um, extra now, funds for like possible matching of grants and infrastructure around like the invasive? Um, it's now $20,000. It's 20,000? Okay. That's awesome. Well, we normally and isn't in there and we 
Yeah. And I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I missed what, I didn't understand what Reggie, this is Gordon Winters. I didn't understand what Reggie, you first said 10, then you said 20. What was so the overall budget is $20,000. Now we increased it 10. And awesome. if we go back, Lynn and I discussed this, we go back in history, we don't really use that whole budget. So in essence, it's probably. But but my, my understanding is that we've never had a parks capital budget. That we've had a parks maintenance budget, but not a capital budget where we start to truly invest. So when you say you had 10, I thought we had zero. <laughs> my. No. We, do, we don't have a capital budget, but we've got a, uh, an annual uh, maintenance budget for parks. So. Go ahead, Gordon. Could I say something? Neil? Go ahead, Gordon. Thank you. I, th I think maybe, Reg, we were, when we spoke in October, we might have, uh, we, we might have not been clear on what we were requesting or hoping the, the board would consider, and that was something other than a maintenance budget, something that we may be able to use in all our parts, not we we were focused, we were talking about Marble Mill, but something that we could focus in on all our parks and have a, a capital improvement budget, so to speak, where there may be something where we could uh, replace the fence at Marble Mill or uh, a cobblestone walkway at the uh, public beach or uh, just general capital improvements that we might be able to make every year so we would know that there was money that the board was investing as well as that we could count on something that would be uh, done every year if we needed it, not just add uh, maintenance budget to more uh, lawn mowing and uh, keeping of the, the mowing of the grass and such of the park. So I just want to make sure we were all on the same page, right, Betsy? I mean, that's how you understood we did we just hope if this kind of came to focus with the marble mill project but if we're looking to hopefully uh it was pretty overwhelming that the uh taxpayers wanted us to do something with that park and we're just hoping that we could get some investment down the future on that as well so thanks for listening if you can hear if you can hear me yeah adam did Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, Debbie. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, you know, we've we've already applied for about how many grants for Marble Mill, Betsy and Elizabeth? Two or three? Three? And we haven't gotten any of them. And I, you know, we feel we've talked about this a lot, and we feel that when you you get grants because you've got a story to tell. And if we could start to tell the story that, well, Swanton um, has started a new parks capital fund of $25,000 this year because they're invested in their parks, because they understand that you can't have economic development without community development, and they're really invested, and that tells a story. And when the grant um, grantors read that it's a much more powerful story yeah. we think we would have a much better chance of getting grant money significant grant money we're talking uh, northern borders regional commission usda i mean significant money but but the village the municipality really has to make a commitment before that can happen that's kind of what we're, we're finding um betsy can maybe speak to this more <laughs> So I just wanted to say that um, we've applied for, I think, one grant and didn't receive it, but we've tried to apply for three grants, but we get caught because we don't have a matching fund for the grant or funds to support the grant. So we kind of keep getting kind of like hitting that wall where um, we as a community, we are invested in this park. Um, and I think that um, showing that we have local investment will bring the community to be more invested in this project. But in order for us to 
move on from that master plan that we created, we need funding to do that. And every grant, not every grant, but most grants that we apply for do have a matching fund. So that's kind of where we wanted to um, look for the taxpayers to kind of, or the trustees to put money aside for that. And if that, some of that money that you're gonna put aside, put into your um, capital maintenance fund can be used for grants, then that's wonderful. I don't know how you earmark that in there. Maybe that $10,000 is a specific infrastructure, capital infrastructure for parks and not just maintenance. Can you say that like instead of adding the $10,000 into your maintenance budget, can you just add a line in your mate park maintenance that says 10,000 for um, infrastructure, capital reserve? I mean, we gotta start somewhere. I mean, we asked for 25, but if you're willing to give us 10, I'm not gonna be greedy. Um, any investment that we receive is going to be beneficial, beneficial moving forward. So we can't hear any of you. You're all so quiet. Are you <laughs> thinking? <laughs> But well, Reg is leaving. Yeah. I think he's unmuting somebody. I guess I know how to clear the room. Yeah. Good job. Good job, Betsy. Unmuting. There we go. Betsy, Adam. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah. one of the questions I have is with regards to Marble Mill. Um, I got the sense from the group that put together the master plan that it may not be feasible to do much, if anything, with Marble Mill because of a flooding. No, I, I thought that no. was I thought that was the opposite. You know, I thought they really worked around the uh, flood plain and made it much more uh, usable and much more uh, recreation friendly than uh what it has been i don't i don't think they said they couldn't do much there was moving of some stuff and maybe they admitted that there might be some times that part of it may flood but i don't think they ever said there's not a usable part of the park right okay no I, and and adam i i just want to make sure we're we're certain we started with marble mill but that's not uh that wasn't our main focus. Our main focus could be any park in the in the village. We're just hoping that at some point we can get a line item in the budget where there was always improvements in the park and that all the increased budget just didn't go to, to maintenance of the park, that someday we're getting to the point where we're we're able, the village is able to have money in the budget that they can do improvements at, at any of our parks, not just Marble Mill. So our, our, our vision, our, we're, we're sort of thinking ahead, you know, the next five years. And our vision is not just for one year of maybe fixing the fence, which frankly, $10,000 won't even fix the fence around the courts, to be honest. But um, it's not, it's really looking ahead and starting with a capital fund, you know, a, something around $25,000 that could be leveraged um, to, uh, to get some more grants. And then once we can, once people and can start to see improvements there, then, you know, three years down the road or something, we have a couple of things that are really um, great for a capital campaign, like a pavilion or a natural playground, but you can't really, you're not going to entice any donors. <laughs> with the way it looks now and you've got to take steps. And so we're trying to think ahead for the next five years and doing this little by little, but having a plan with a whole bunch of different funding resources. I understand. I mean, and, and a committee could be formed to work with the people you hire or a group subgroup 
of the trustee off from the trustees that helps create this plan for your parks. Um, but as we all know, Marble Mill is probably the same, looks exactly the same as when we were all youth. Um, and Swanton Beach has had upgrades, but I mean, there's a little love to be given to both of them. And I think just investing in them will just create so much more positive in our community. And I think the more we can invest in our parks, you know, it's gonna boost our economic development, our vitality of our community. People are gonna wanna live here. Um, and I know that, you know, any little bit will help, um, but we really need your support to move forward. Have we been denied any grants because we didn't have matching funds yet? Well, no, we haven't applied because because the scramble is always you need 20%. And so we don't even apply because we're not sure where the, I mean, to, to Debbie's point, uh, I'm sorry, it's Elizabeth. To Debbie's point, you know, Marble Mill in particular is gonna take, you know, a couple hundred thousand to, to get it where we want it. And if we were to go after a hundred thousand dollar grant that needs a 20% match, we're, we're not even on, we're not even in the room. So, you know, and it's not to say that we're gonna do that next year, but if we start with a fund, say 10,000, we spend 5,000, so we carry over 5,000. And then the following year we get 10, so now we have 15, so we can build on this and, and get other people to invest. And I think it's worth having a conversation with the town, I'll throw that out there. Um, because that's the consideration is sometimes we automatically dismiss grants because the money's not there as far as we know um there's there is no money so i i think um and i've had multiple conversations about this i think you know ideally twenty five thousand would be great i'm not sure this is the year to ask for that much just because of everything that's going on so you know, 10,000 is seed money. And then, you know, every year, if we can build on that, then we can start applying for some of those larger grants um, and then work to get other funding because people do want to see that there's a buy-in from the community. Yeah, I think one of the thoughts uh, this year when we were looking at the budgets was if we added that extra 10 on there, plus another part-time FTE this summer, you see how much work we could get done uh, basically, if we could hire two part-time people for the summer who are going to be uh, energetic enough to get some work done, see what we see what we were able to accomplish this summer, and if we were successful in moving stuff along, then we look at possibly upgrading that, uh, increasing that budget uh, a little bit more for the following year. And Lynn's looking at me, shaking her head. Yeah, that's that sounds like something a little bit that we could work with. Yeah, and and I think that I think that's a good idea and I think it's feasible. Um, and I also wanted to jump in on what Elizabeth was saying about matching grants. One of the reasons why we kind of some grants we couldn't apply for is because of the boundary survey. But I know that that was um, funded by Rides Vermont and it was um, should be completed or is completed. So once we get the boundary survey completed, that will open us up for more opportunity as well. Okay. I was gonna say something there for a second. Oh, so yeah, that was the other part. So one of the things that I found out I wasn't doing very well is sharing information well enough with Lynn. And uh, so that's on part of my uh, evaluation this year is to do a better job at sharing information. So she's not in the dark when it comes to a lot of these grant applications and stuff. So that part I'm gonna improve in, but uh, since then, I've been you know, sharing stuff with her, and we've been talking about this. And uh, I think part of the discussion too with budgets was this was the best first step, but I can always be overruled by the trustees too. We're welcome to include Lynn in all our conversations about money too. That's helpful. Um, yeah, I didn't know Lynn was on there till I saw her name <laughs> down there. Hi, Lynn. Uh, uh, so, so. Reg, just a, just a uh, novice question, I guess, when it comes to budgeting or naive question, maybe. How, if, if you uh, have a line item and increase this Rex 
parks budget by ten thousand dollars and we're saying we would like something to go into the investment of the parks the the capital improvements of the parks if we do it the way you're suggesting it, it can it just be lost in the shuffle like is it just going to go to more maintenance that they uh they mowed differently or did so we're, i'm just worried that the money kind of gets forgotten is the wrong word but used used for more lawn mowing instead of more uh improve the park type projects like if the if it rains if it rains more, more next summer than it did this summer and they have to mow the lawn more, is that where the money comes from like are we just going to lose the chance to get the uh, pro uh some a couple capital projects done and then in the future does it just then does it just become part of the budget that we're mowing the lawn for that makes sense that makes sense there's lynn now i can see you so so what i do when i um i have numbers here her well, we can't hear you, Lynn. To a spreadsheet. I'm doing it. Oh, now you're muted. You're muted. So when I work on the budgets, I have like a capital spreadsheet that I have. Um, the department heads tell me if they've got capital like a new truck or water lines or whatever that they're working on for the next year. And that's where I would put, um, like if you guys were gonna do a fence on the tennis court or the retaining wall, it would go in that schedule and then that's what I feed into the budgets. Um, so like uh, in the police department, they have a line item called equipment or you know a line item that says cruiser and that's where I would match that budget line item back into that Excel spreadsheet that shows um, what their capital purchases are. So we do track it and the board will see that schedule. I don't know if that clarifies a little better. Yeah, no, no, thank you. I just, yeah, I just want to make sure it doesn't be if you, if you have to mow the lawn five extra times to just kind of get buried in this from that $10,000. Thank so you. Lynn, can you cop, can you carry a, a capital expense over? Anything left over? Sorry, say that again. Elizabeth, you gotta repeat yourself. Okay. Lynn, can you carry over anything that's left over from the capital reserve? So what we do, um, because we don't have a true capital fund, so what we um per se. We do budget um, like for equipment in the fire department and the highway department for large purchases. Um, but the other thing we do is that there's a line item on the warning every year that says can surplus funds of, you know, from the highway department be put into a capital fund. Okay. So we do move that um, each year if if the fund has a you know a fund uh, a profit. If they have a loss at the end of the year, there's nothing to move. Um, right. But if they have a profit, we do, we, we put it up in front of the voters each year. And since I've been here, they have voted to allow us to do that every year. Okay. So if there's a surplus left over in the parks fund, can you move that and add it to the 20,000? It would be, it goes in total and the parks is part of the general fund. So it would be a matter of if the general funded total had a profit or not. We can't do line item because we budget in total. So if we go way over in a line item, um, we, we basically take it from another line item so that at the end of the day, we want our total expenses to at least be equal to or less than our total budgeted expenses. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome.
So um, thank you for investing into your parks. I appreciate that. Um, and, and again, I mean, we asked for 25, we get 10, but not to say that we can't use the whole 20 maybe that you invest in there. Um, so I just wanted one more public comment. Um, so I don't know if anybody's noticed the beautiful greens and berries on the bridge in Swanton, but I just wanted to do a little shout out to um, Maddie um, Lampman, which is Crystal Lampman's daughter. Um, she is an 11th grade um, student at MBU and she took the time to create those beautiful um, arrangements on our bridge. So I just want to thank Maddie um, Lampman for the arrangement on the bridge. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Yes, Betsy, I, I noticed that. I noticed it every day. It looks really nice. Um, and I heard Crystal was behind that. I didn't realize it was her daughter doing it, but it does look nice. You got some little uh, uh, Christmas lights that are solar powered, I think, that uh, are on during the, the evening, so. Oh, I'm glad they're working. Yes. I yeah. bought those at our local Ace Hardware. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I've got one Thank more you. question for as long as we're talking in public comment between Gordon and Debbie and uh, Betsy. Um, I know these parks are uh, the capital improvements that you want to do, and I, I can I can appreciate what we're ultimately after. But uh, are you uh, also going to the town to see if they want to participate in this too, or are you just uh, uh, asking the village to fund this? So I'm going to be on the town meeting at tomorrow night as well to talk about a few um, few items. Um, and that's one thing I'm going to bring up is, um, for one, ask the question, yes. not assuming that they don't already have it, but is there funds available for grants that right. come up, come about that we need matching funds for? And then if not, so, then yeah, between the two of them. can we create an, um, a line item for that? Because I think each, as a municipality, town or village, I think we need to make sure there's some sort of in, in rolling funds for grants that come up because right. there's a lot of grants out there that we're missing some opportunities on. Um, so we really need to capitalize on that. Um, and that's why there's, there's, we've got some great community advocacy um, that are looking out for grants. And when you guys don't have the opportunity to do that, we're here to write them, to look for them. Um, so there's opportunity for those grants to be written. We just need the funds, matching funds to support those grants. So we're not asking you to do the work. We're just asking for you to invest in the work that we are doing for you. Um, <laughs> you and Ryan too. We lose you, Neil. I didn't hear you, Neil. Sorry. You hear me? Yeah. I think everybody goes needs to go to Reg's computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. What? Are you back, Neil? Yeah. I think you might have overloaded your Wi-Fi. <laughs> Can anybody hear me? Oh, a little bit. Try it again. Bit. Just. Uh, Rich, is every? Are you the only one that's hardwired? So. Uh, nothing, Neil. Nothing. Go. Nope. Um, there you go. Try now. Try now. Through. I wonder why we can. Rich is getting his exercise. El <laughs> Elizabeth, Betsy, and I like are fine. We can have our own meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna vote to approve the twenty five thousand. All in favor? <laughs> Say goodbye.
Arnold. Oh, for Christ's sake, I have an emotion on the floor. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Saying was uh, in the tank. Yep. Get what you're <laughs> like. You left. Button, so. uh, you effort. Reg, have everybody turn their their video off. Okay. Please. Or Reg could turn off everybody's video. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Yes. So I wonder, aren't we all going through kind of the same? Yeah, but sometimes it happens in the FCD, FCIDC office too. Sometimes it just, if you turn the video off, it works better. Is my audio still on? Oh, hello. No, wow, that's on. better. That's better? Yep. That's better. Okay. So we shut our video down like uh, Elizabeth suggested, so. So I, I forgot. Uh, you you heard me about the, uh, the town getting involved in this too, didn't you, Gordon? I did. I did. Okay. I think I think I think that's a, a well well two things. I think you guys, if you should find a line item for stronger Wi-Fi in the in the office, <laughs> these Zoom calls. And the second is I I totally agree that that town we should find some way. I just wish, I think we came to you first because. We, uh, I don't know, you were the parks are in the village. And the parks are in the village. And, and the parks are in the, the, village, are in the village. And, the parks are and, you, and you'd give us a good, uh, a good workout here. So, uh, but I don't understand, and I wish I did, how that worked. Like, I, I never can quite understand how the tax rate is and who pays for what and where the, the money flows through the town to the village and from the village to the town. So, but I would say the one thing I do know is both village residents and town residents use the park, so. Yes. Yeah. Right. Although as Reg, to re, what Reg usually says right about now is that if, if it comes out of the town's general fund, then village residents pay twice because they pay, right Reg? Correct. Correct. Okay, I heard that. You did hear that, huh? I heard that. That's all I heard was yes, but. Well, thank you very much. Do you do you think it's beneficial for us to stay on it for the budget or can we leave the meeting? Okay. Since we're not village taxpayers. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> so, um, so, so if there was a line item that people went in to vote on and it said, Parks and Recs capital budget twenty five thousand dollars. How how what what happens when you see line items like that and you vote for? It? What happens, Gordon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, how do the how do some things get on the ballot and then some things are just voted by? Uh, we we have to post it on the warning. Uh, so does, that, does it have to be petitioned? Does it have to be like how? I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just. I'm just not wondering. We're petitioning something. I'm just wondering how that. Right. The trustees yeah, we, can put it on, um, or it can be petitioned. Right. Did you get that, Gordon? Yes, I did. Yeah. I I think what Gordon's trying to get at is if, is it, something that's would be would that be better than putting it into your general budget do you think that's what gordon's getting to <laughs> i think so <laughs> I, I i'm just wondering like the money comes the same place i know that i mean if they vote it it's not coming from any different pocket i'm sure yeah that that's a possibility gordon But but not the right avenue. Is that correct? I mean, is that no, not necessarily. You uh, 
one thing it would do is we could get a better vision of how many are behind us and how many aren't. Right. I, I mean, for me, I, I'm just curious, like how that, like I see sometimes things are on the budget and sometimes they're not. And it seems like if you said, would you invest $25,000 in your parks that to me, that would be something that would be. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a possibility. We, so uh, that, that could be a plus or not. So either, I think if they put the extra $10,000 in and we're at 20,000 and then we ask for an additional 25 as a separate article or you're saying one or the other? Well, I think the, tw the 10 is already in. Yes. Well, with an additional 10. So there was 10 and they were adding 10, correct, Lynn? Correct. So we could petition for the balance that you are looking for. Are you hearing me? You mean the 15? <laughs> <laughs> the 15 Neil well let's uh we'll talk over to see how much but it's definitely a possibility to put a line item in for a certain amount for that funding uh, well we we can talk it over with Lynn and see what we can try to what not what we can get away with but what we can uh, comfortably budget in this year uh, and see if the balance that you're looking for we can put on a line item cool great thank you thank you thank you for the influencers in the room or on the <laughs> call <laughs> Oh, we, we just extended your meeting, Neil. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, trustees, Reg and Lynn. <laughs> We're going to stick around for a little while, if that's okay. Oh. We'll be talking soon, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, Neil. We'll stay and listen to what you guys have to say. I'll make sure Is I that, You can turn your camera back on, Neil. Uh, okay. There. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Gordon. Debbie. Yeah, Adam, thank you, Chris. Lynn. So. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, can everybody hear me now? Everybody can hear me in the room, I guess. So. Uh, next item on our agenda is to approve and accept the minutes from our Monday, November 23rd, 2020 meeting. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to approve and accept the minutes from our Monday, November 23rd uh, meeting. Uh, any questions about that? Revisions? What? We tabled the police department report last night. Yeah, from the agenda. Any more questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Great. We accept the minutes. Item number six approve and accept village warrants uh, through Friday, December 11th, 2020. What's your pleasure on the warrants? Uh, 117. Oh, okay. The number. Okay. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded to approve and accept the village warrants. Any questions on the warrants? No, I guess not. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion's carried. 
I got number seven, uh, Swan Village uh, Police Department update. This is what we uh, know. Reg, if anyone's talking, we can't hear you. No, I hear it. Chief, if you're talking, you're muted. Oh, you got me on mute. Reg tells me to start and he had his computer muted. So I'll start all over again. <laughs> so during the month of November in the village, we responded to 129 calls for service. Uh, we also stopped uh, another motor vehicle wise, another 26 vehicles that resulted in municipal warnings. And then another 10 vehicles that resulted in traffic infractions for a total fine amount that we issued out in November of $1,571. Of that, um, the majority of those stops occurred on our main thoroughfares, uh, 78, uh, First Street, Canada Street, Grand Avenue. Uh, we had some infractions on Greenwich, New Street, uh, Merchants Row, um, and we had uh, some infractions down uh, near the Swant Lumber area that were, were issued out um, for those. Any questions? Just looking at me with a okay, Reg. Okay, thank you, uh, Joy, for your report. Uh, the next item on our agenda this evening is to discuss the 2021 uh, budget drafts. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Lynn and hope everybody can hear her. Uh, if not, we'll adjust. So. So a few things that uh, kind of cover all of the departments. 
Um, if you look in your budgets, the electric water and sewer revenue hasn't been updated yet. That's one of the last pieces of the budget I do. Um, health insurance across the village, the premium only went up about 1%. Um, department to department, you're going to see some look like it went up or down more. Um, we had a couple of employees that because of retirements moved within the village. So we had one um, that has a family plan that moved from one department to another. And the, for example, the employee that retired out of that uh, department didn't take our health insurance. So you're seeing a jump in that department. Uh, but overall, the premiums only went up 1%, which is probably one of the lowest increases we've seen in a long time. Um, workman's comp, our experience mod went down. So we're seeing some savings there across the village. Uh, but on the flip side, property and liability insurance went up. So it, it in some of the departments, it kind of balanced each other out. Um, so in the electric department, which would be pages starting on page one, So there really isn't anything out of the ordinary um, in the first on the first page. Um, that's basically your hydro expenses toward the bottom. Um, in the maintenance of the hydro plant, which is um, icon number zero one zero zero five five four five ten, which is um, we have a budget of sixty eight thousand. That is the about 39,000 of that is a trash rake overhaul uh, that we do every couple of years and the electric maintenance program which we cycle through that it's like a five-year cycle on those so that's the bulk of that and if you go over to page two at the top is purchase power it is four hundred thousand dollars higher than the budget we had for two thousand for twenty twenty. Um, that's us working on that a little bit. Um, I don't know, Reggie, if you want to explain a little better. Basically, what we're going to be supplying is all of our customers and uh, not expected to um, pay transmission fees to the ISO. Both to the uh, uh, event event? Yeah. And what that really means is instead of using power to hydro, putting it on the We'll, yeah, we'll be covering our load is what it works out to instead of it going out into the grid and coming back. For next year, nothing. It's costing us. Because what I... This is VEPSA's Veps looking, yeah, VEPSA's the one that's running these power numbers. Um, but right now, what it looks like is even going out the next couple of years, the budget's going to be about what we're paying for the budget in 2020, which was 2.2 million. 
So like I haven't seen the savings in the proposed budget that they gave us. And like we've been trying to retire these units, it's been what a three year process. So it's it's been a while that we've been in this in the works with this. Our load has stayed pretty stable. Uh, we have very little, well, right now we're not seeing any growth. We're actually down about 2%. I don't know if the attorney has anything to do with this. No. Well, how can you can't charge you unless you provide something? In order to do something to get paid for it, you have to do something. But this isn't no longer giving you an electricity. So why do you have to pay all those fees? This is we're paying off the vessel for covering our shortfall for purchase housing. So it's contracts. Yeah. It's or you're saying we we contract to good purchase power we didn't need. No, it's not saying that. Yeah. How do you pay for something you need yet? It's good. I gotta go back to the budget. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean there I mean we've questioned the increase and I haven't gotten an answer back on it yet. Um on why I mean, it's Right. Right. And that's why, I mean, it's in the budget because, yeah, I mean, this is the number that we've gotten. So it's better than the number that I, you know, not having a number. But, you know, this is one that they're still, we're still working on. Um, on page, on page three, um under the admin and general expenses we've increased the budget for office supplies we're gonna our computers are not as our computers are aging out um, we just replaced two computers through a grant in the front office that were put in service in 2013. we have got three other, two other computers in that front office that are the same age. Um, my computer is gonna be six years old and there's another computer in the front office that's also gonna be six years old. We should be wrote, those are, you know, they're workhorses. They're used all day, every day. Um, we need to make them reliable. We're having issues with them. So we've gotten the budget to replace three more. We used to be on a cycle of replacing five computers a year and we've kind of gotten off that cycle and I'm trying to get us back onto that cycle. So we're seeing an increase in the office supplies there. Uh, down a little further, where we get into like the VEPSA fees and the, and the renewable energy credits. Our renewable energy credits are going up substantially when I did the research on it, we budgeted just under 15,000 um, for the year that we're in. And this year's for 2021, the budget is $50,000. Um, we had a carryover in renewal, renewable energy credits going into 2020, around $43,000. So we used that up this year. So next year we're, we're gonna be paying, and these are our tier, the tier one, tier two, and tier three credits. Yeah, because tier one, we were fully covered. We'll have this forever, every year. So that's a substantial increase. A lot of us would have been, would have seen that much of an increase in 
subject. Is that because you have to accept all um, trans all all of the satellite transmission? The renewable uh, energy credits or renewable like solar? It used to be fifteen percent of our load. Yeah, it's not that anymore. Yeah, more. Yeah, well, this isn't so. This, this isn't is, solar, though. Yeah. This is separate from solar. Okay. Yeah, opportunities. Yeah. Like it costs us because we have to do the ins we have to pay the incentives, like the incentives on using a you know electric vehicles, the incentives on water, um, heat pumps. Heat pumps. Our rates aren't necessarily the ones creating the demand. Why do we have to pay? These are some of these are VEPSA funded projects, like the heat pump incentives and the electric vehicle incentives. That's programs that VEPSA is running that we're having to pay for them to administer it. We're one of the largest utilities in VEPSA, so we pay mm -hmm. Swanton, Morrisville, and Lindenville yeah. pay the lying share of everything of VEPSA. We're the three largest utilities there. Well, they, I mean, they, they have always based our fees based on load ratio share. That's the way they've always done it. And you figure like, you know, our power budget is more complex than a small utilities budget. And that's where I. Right, these are types of projects. I think we're getting a little confused with what we pay in for EVT fees. Yeah, this has nothing to do with EVT. This is mandated from Wells and State Farm. That we need, they want us to be more renewable. And in order to do that, we have to buy uh, off incentives or pay in for incentives. So if you buy an electric car, you get a rebate for it. If you buy coal kind of heat pumps, you get a, a rebate for it. So this number is going to change. If we become more efficient using electricity, yes, eventually. electric vehicles is a big goal, mm -hmm. a huge goal. Yeah. Hopefully, your sales will increase, not a lot, but uh, we're not seeing it yet. Well, it'll have to balance. Mm -hmm. Because these are tr like we're trying to get away from the fossil fuels. Yes, exactly. And that's what this is. In so, Efficiency Vermont tries to get people to save energy your renewable energy credits are trying to get people to use electricity it's an oxymoron so the bottom line there, there are two tipping points here there's a point where just because we're big we that got to keep the pocket that needs to be So the bottom line here is kids, no matter what what we're doing with our, our rate payers, we've got the second cheapest power in the state. So we've got to be doing something right with with the guidance from VEPSA. Well, I'll say that you can't do too much complaining. But in the western part of the United States, they pay half of what we do. We are in the western part of the United States. No, so I'm just saying there's electricity costs the same to generate in Idaho as it does in Vermont. Okay. So further down on that page is the property insurance and workman's comp. Um, property insurance is going up about eight to nine thousand um, dollars, but our workman's comp insurance last year we paid, or this year that we're in right now, we paid seventy-five thousand, and the budget that I've gotten is just under fifty thousand. So it's gone down significantly. Yep. Yep. So the bank charges is going to be 
um, the, any fees associated with you know, our credit cards, which we go through invoice cloud. So that's substantial. Um, as people have been doing the online banking through invoice cloud, we're seeing the fees go up. They've kind of stabilized. What we're paying is very comparable to what Morrisville's paying. Um, we've been, we kind of compare and um, it's a lot of money, but we're getting, especially now with our office shut down and people aren't coming in, we're, you know, we're getting the people to pay online. Um, and, and that's the way, I mean, your younger people, they don't write checks anymore. You know, they, they want to be able to get on their computer at night and, and pay their bills. So, and we've got people that have been disconnected that they go online and pay. And like we had an instant, not that, well, it was earlier this month or last month, um, you know, Mark was able to go online before he went and reconnected the power to, and, you know, cause they said they'd paid and he was able to see it. Um, you know, so, and it's instantaneous, like that we're, it's almost, isn't it? It's pretty instantaneous when they pay, we're seeing it in our system because invoice cloud is married up to our billing system. So it's helping the customers, you know, they got, oh, shoot, the meter, you know, we're supposed to be disconnected today. I can jump online, make a payment, and we're checking that before we go out the door. My question? Yep. Uh, Which one? The yep. So the... Well, so there's an adjustment I have to make at the end of the year because there's a GASB rule out there on how you deal with post-employment benefits. And with retirement, we have to show, um, and this, this is coming down from the, it's a GASB ruling, but it's the state of Vermont that gives me the calculations. And it's basically the present value of the retirement that people are taking now and then, so what we pay right now is for a future benefit. You know, we're paying retirement in on all of our employees and some of them aren't gonna retire from here for 20 years. So you're deferring that payment or that expense, what you're showing as an expense is current benefits. So your current retirees. Right. It's a. Yes, and so if you look at our balance sheet, there's huge like unfunded liability, there's, you know, allocated retirement, there's a bunch of, it's about you know, eight or nine journal entries that you have to do to do this calculation. Um, to me, and if you talk to some CPAs, it's the most worthless <laughs> GASB pronouncement that we've had because it really doesn't tell the true story. Um, it's, you know, it's showing a huge unfunded liability in some cases for some municipalities. Um, the, so what I budget is what we actually pay in to Beamers. And every year for the last several years, they've increased the employer share and the employee share that comes out of the checks. So right now uh, for group B, um, I don't remember group C, I don't remember the percentage, but group B, we pay, the village pays in 6% and that'll go up to six and a quarter percent in July. Um, group C is, but the employee share is, you know, higher than that. So, um, you know, it's, it's a defined benefit and the employer and the employer share in the cost of that. So over, and I should have probably said earlier before I started this, um, my goal this year when I was starting these budgets, given the COVID economy, um, was to try to level fund if at all possible. So what I'm hoping is for the electric water and sewer, we can get through the year without having to raise rates. Um, the electric, is looking like we will probably budget for a slight profit. Um, water and sewer right now are looking like we're gonna budget for a, a, a deficit, but we've got 
cash in the bank to kind of offset that. Um, I just, I'm trying to keep things as level as we can um, going into this year. So in the water, maintenance of reservoir, which is like halfway down the page of page six, we budgeted 1800 for 2020 and I'm budgeting 11,500 for 21. That is, we're on a cycle to clean our reservoirs and that's about $7,500. Um, so that's the big part of the increase and that gets done every, I believe it's every five years. No, we hire it out. Yeah, but you don't, re it, exactly. Chemicals are staying pretty stable in this department. Testing's going up a little bit. Um, there's just, you know, there's the state puts on other things that we're required to, to test for. This is one of the departments where health insurance is going up. And that's, I mean, that's it. The water department is really pretty stable compared to the year we're currently in. Okay. So we can move on to sewer, which is starts on page nine. So in the sewer department, we're still like, we did the test pilot study uh, for the phosphorus removal. Um, that we're still waiting to get the results of that from the engineers, which will be what, early 21? Okay. So in this budget, chemicals, uh, we increased quite a bit. And testing, um, Jim felt that he knows he's got added testing he's got to do for PFOAs maybe. Um, and then his chemicals uh, are increasing also. I don't remember. Um, let me. So it's the alum, lime, caustic, and polymer. And I want to say one of them, the price has gone up substantially on but I don't remember which one. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only, those are the only line items that I really are skewed more. Um, we have very little debt in the sewer fund too, because we just have that one CSO loan that's still outstanding. We do, we are incurring debt as far as we're going through the engineering right now um, for the uh, phosphorus reduction, um, but that is deferred until we make a decision on going forward for a bond vote. And if we go forward for a bond vote, that engineering cost and all that will be rolled into the debt. So 22 for a bond vote, I would guess. Yep. Yeah. 
So in the highway department, which starts on page 12, so halfway down, we have maintenance of summer streets labor and maintenance of winter streets labor. In total, those two numbers, um, I split them a little differently this year than I've done in the past. I reduced the summer street labor, but increased the winter street because we were going over budget in the winter street. Um, the way I budget wages is I calculate what the employees' wages are estimated to be and then have to split them out based on where they tend to work. So like for the, for the public works crew, they have labor going into parks, summer streets, winter streets, sidewalks, maintenance of water lines, maintenance of sewer lines. They're kind of spread amongst several departments. So in total, the winter and summer streets is the same amount. And I just, that was in the budget originally. I just kind of split it a little differently. Uh, property insurance and workers comp was the same as, you know, property insurance went up a little bit, workman's comp went down. On page 13, towards the bottom, the lease expense, that's the sidewalk plow. 2021 is the last payment on that. Yep. And then the equipment line item for the highway is, um, the big one is the line striper, you know, to stripe the parking lots with. The one we've got is old and they had a lot of problems with it this summer. Yeah, so we were budgeting for a new one of them. Paving is staying the same. Um, the, the equipment replacement fund, that's kind of the budget balancer. We level funded these guys. Um, so that equipment replacement fund is kind of the number to, to get it to balance. Uh, one thing that will be on the equipment list for you guys to make a decision on with this budget is they're in need of replacing the older of the two plow trucks. Um, the quote is about $140,000 and um, we have enough in their equipment savings account to pay for it without, go, without taking out a debt. Uh, so in talking with Dean and Reggie, that's kind of the path we wanted to take. And that's the reason that we set money aside. Um, that will pretty much drain that account. There'll be like $20,000 left. Um, but when you look at it, the rest of our equipment's fairly new. Um, the next piece of equipment that would probably have to be replaced is the other plow truck. And that's down the road a few years still um, because we've done the sidewalk plow and you know the backhoe's fairly new, the one ton's new. Um, so that department is in pretty good shape, except for this plow truck that we're having issues with now. And that plow truck was purchased, I believe in 2004. I'm pretty sure it got here right about the time I did. So the next page is the general fund, page 14. So like we talked about earlier under public comment, um, Reggie and I increased the maintenance of lawns and parks from 10,000 to 20,000. And we increased the labor line item to two um, summer employees. Last year we had budgeted one summer employee. Uh, one thing I, you know, we've noticed is um, by having the summer employee that we've had, they're doing the lawn mowing. So we've got somebody a little less expensive mowing the, the lawns versus our full-time employees. Um, so that's, that helps keep that line item under budget. Yeah. 
Yeah, Dean was able to get a lot of work done um, with not having to babysit somebody mowing the lawns. And, and also in that line item, um, the person that we had doing the lawns also rebuilt the bathrooms down at the beach house. Nobody was able to see them because they were locked because of COVID, but um, those got done too. I wasn't going to mention that. You know, don't get the caliber of those curves that you really like in the part time summer. Yeah. You know, we were fortunate with Brian when he came in. I mean, he, you know, you, you're talking to Tommy, you don't have to tell him what to do. You just point him in that direction and they get the stuff done. That was, that was the issue with this is that, uh, I mean, he got stuff done and you didn't have to tell him what to do. You know, machine break down, he fixed it. Then we don't. We built the bathroom plan. So that's what that's one again. It's going to be one of our issues trying to get two five families to help with our parks the way they need to be helped. Um, one thing that's not in this budget is um, we had been doing some work with an engineer about looking at ways to make the complex more up to date and space the space that we need. Um, the the project they came back with was just quite cost prohibitive. Um, so we need to put some more, Reggie and I have kind of brainstormed of another situ, you know, another thought process that would give us some space because um, we're busting at the seams and like you guys no longer have a boardroom. <laughs> um, but we got to put some money in the budget for some, some engineering costs to be able to put to paper um, what we're thinking about doing. Um, so that's still not in here. Yeah, that it was a big project. <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, that's something we've got to further discuss, but you know, that's definitely not in here, some money to, to do engineering with. Um, You mean 2022? 2022. Yeah, 22. You go to the voters for it, and then 2023, you're looking at some cost. Yeah. But one thing about, I mean, our bathrooms need to be handicapped. Yeah, we don't have. So the next budget is the fire budget, and our guys have been patiently waiting over there. <laughs> so. We have level funded this budget. Um, I think this is probably the first time this has happened <laughs> since I've been here at least. Um, yes. So we've got a couple of areas where it went up. Um, we left salaries the same, but we're going to, that's a discussion for later and what we want to do there. Telephone and internet are going up, um, but they have put tablets into the trucks. What's the program you guys use? It's like a, yeah. Have looked at it, how many 
So with that comes, you know, cell phone charges. So uh, for property insurance and workman's comp for these guys, the net effect was like a $300 increase because it went up and it went down. Um, dispatching, which is 19,542, that we've been given a confirmation that that is gonna hold for 2021 and 2022. So that's a, that's a, three, a three year hold on what that cost is, which was great to hear. So down in the equipment line item, this year that we're finishing up, we had $60,000 in change budgeted. That's been dropped down to 14,725. The 60,000 included the compressor that was bought last year out of their equipment savings fund. So that 14,000 is um, equipment that they're wishing to get this year. I'm gonna skip the replacement fund for a second. Radio equipment, we increased a little bit um, because they've got radios that need to be upgraded. And the PPE line item is dropping from 58,000 down to 16,005. We have paid for the last batch of air packs in 2020. So kind of like for the last couple of years, the discussion that um, they've been having with Reggie and I is when the air packs dropped off, what are we gonna do with that extra money? Because it's been in the budget now. And we all were at the same conclusion that that needed to go into an equipment replacement fund to start building that again. So that the next time we have to buy a large piece of equipment like a truck, we aren't taking 100% of it out in debt. You know, these last two trucks that we bought, we had $100,000 in the bank. That's not a lot. Um, so this way, if we do this, um, we'll at least be starting to, to build. Their budget stays stable um, for this year. Um, the taxpayers don't see an increase. Um, so that's why we came up with the 35,000. And I came up with that. Um, I looked at what they needed for equipment, what they had given me. And I also took into account um, the increase in the telephone because they put tablets in the trucks. Um, so it basically the net effect, um, the 35 made the budget balance, but it also, there was a you know mathematical calculation, you know, as far as they increased this line item, but de decreased this one. And, um, you know, it's a start. And the, the truck payment went down a little bit. I mean, we're not gonna see a lot yet because they're still paying a lot on interest. Um, the other piece, they have enough money left in their budget that we're in this year to purchase the gear dryer that they've been wanting. Um, so there's room there to purchase that in, in the 2020 budget. So if you guys were to us, that's what we need to do. What we're finding is that we need to we need we need to need gear drive, or I need to provide two sets of gear to every side of the house. So what's happening is we're going on calls, so we have to decontaminate our gear. In order to decontaminate our gear, we have to get the rest. Now we can't buy fire when we're wet. So we either need a second set of gear or we need to drive so we can try to gear up on the way back. And the gears, how much a piece? It's well, a full set of turnout gear. Is a lot. It's it's so, a, yeah, so a gear dryer at nine, was it 98? 9,000 9, 9, 9, 9, is three sets of gear, basically. So you need a motion to approve that funding for that dryer tonight? Or? Harley, I did, didn't you? 
Well, it's it wasn't in it wasn't in 2020's budget. It was going to be on the wish list for 21. But we right, but we have room in the we have room to get it this year. We just have to say you guys are fine. You're you're aware that we're doing this. So we're building that, that purchase. So we don't really need a motion but that. Okay. I don't think anybody has a problem. Uh, just let the minutes know that we acknowledge yeah. that they understand what they're doing and we need yeah. to approve it. Okay. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess we don't need one. Yeah. By the way, we like your uh, Christmas decorations. Thank you. Is there anything else about your budget you guys wanted to touch on with them? I think right now I think we covered everything and all the other parts We were gonna do that in executive session. All right, so I'll jump to the police department budget which is page 18. So this budget looks like it's going down, but I don't have, it's not going to be going down. Um, the police department, the uh, fingerprint machine is out of date, doesn't, it's not supported anymore. I just got the, I've had the pricing, but I just got the lease numbers Friday afternoon. Um, so it'll be, it's right around $6,500 a year on a three year lease. Um, so that isn't in these numbers yet. So it does look like the taxes are going down, but it's really not at this point in time. Um, we've got in here, the school resource officer contract and the town of Swanton. Those are the proposed numbers. Um, I think Joey is still talking with both of those entities on those numbers. Just at the high school right now. We do not have one at the elementary school. We are working on that. Um, still, we have some grant issues. We were, we were planning on putting one there um, for this school year, but due to some grant issues, it's right now on hold. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some better news here for that shortly. The goal is the school, the school would like the school would like it, but you know, unfortunately with talks and stuff right now, it's, it's kind of on hold. Working on it. Yeah, that's the intent is to have somebody there. Uh, well, right now there's a school resource officer. The supervisory union has been dedicated up to the high school. But it's it's one school budget now for the whole district. So we really have four. We have four elementary schools. But we have four elementary schools that a elementary SRO would cover. Care of all the all the students, but we don't have that in play right now. It was it's being, it's being discussed uh, between our department and supervisory union currently. It's, it's just not there yet. We got some hurdles to go over yet. Do the surrounding communities have resource officers at the elementary? The Alvin does. Um, that's the only in our county. That's the only elementary schools that have SROs. Other uh, counties have SROs in some of the elementary schools, but they seem to have been primarily focused on high schools in, in a lot of areas. And part of that's due to money. I would think that that cost would be part of the school budget. Right, currently the, the high school SRO is funded through the school budget um, to the you know, we request numbers of, of that in our budget for transparency, mm -hmm. but the, we build a we build a school for the cost of that SRO. Yeah, I show a revenue item and an expense item. 
So the same thing with the Indian effect of young and physical people. Uh, and that's, those are what we're working on now. That are the way that we create a uh, full board for the elementary school. So we appreciate having the SRO and the elementary put that in the budget. They, they want one. It's right now for the elementary, but the parents are. Some of the short forms and stuff that they have in our school would be impressive if they had the kids out for COVID. Is that it halfway down the page on police salaries. When I was looking at the overtime budget, I took out anything <clears throat> like we have the boat. That's all stone stone garden money. So that's all reimbursable as a grant. So I took those expenses out of the budget completely. I also took out, um, we have a, um, an officer that's been working a shift a week on stone garden. So I reduced that because that's a, you know, we get reimbursed for that. So to try and make this budget more like purely what our taxpayers are gonna be paying. So that's why you'll see um, I mean, it is going up, but there's a fair amount of overtime in there for shift coverage and stuff. So Joey and I are still working on some options on that um, to kind of help mitigate those costs. So um, on the page 19, <clears throat> Way at the bottom says is cruiser lease. That lease is finished up in September. So we only have nine months of the year with a lease payment. We just got a cruiser um, that we had put in last in the budget we're in right now that we paid for out of the equipment fund. Um, that cruiser is, came Friday, right? It's yeah. it's all ready. It's on the on the road now. Or uh, just about. Road, uh, okay. <laughs> Very little changes in the variety style that I just for. So that's it that I had with the um, police budget. I still like there's the wages and, and associated benefits still need to be fine tuned. Page 20 is what we call our commercial building. Um, there's really, I mean, that's just basically the state of Vermont recapture now on that. Um, the RIV is sitting in this fund, but you're not, I don't have anything budgeted. I'm carrying all those costs on the balance sheet to track them in a work in progress um, so that we know what we've spent on that property. So that's why you wouldn't see anything associated. I'm not expensing anything. I'm carrying it as the cost of the asset. Yes. Yeah. Page 21 is a schedule that I do um, for anticipated expenses. Uh, I mean, it, it varies from year to year. I mean, right, like this year, the, the highway department's got their plow truck in there. Um, the electric department had the guide bearing for 215,000. They had that in there last year. We didn't do it. It's in there again. We've added some air switches and motor operator for the lines. Um, there's a truck for under the electric, that's the maintenance, um, has a truck that they want to replace. And the water department is looking to replace, um, they've got a Ford Ranger right now, and they're looking to not necessarily get another truck, um, but like an SUV or something. I mean, he needs something that's fuel efficient, needs like all wheel drive or four wheel drive so he can get to the reservoir, but he doesn't necessarily need a pickup. Um, so, I mean, 
And then the last page is where the tax rates sit right now. Um, they are still subject to change. But I mean, you can see really the only one that's the only one that's going up is the general fund. Um, but it's not going up much. But I don't have the police budget. I mean, none of these budgets are done done. Um, but I know that there's some changes in the police budget. Um, I would say the one that's closest to being done is the fire department at this point. So that concludes what I have. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's where, I mean, we went with the 10, um, and then the extra parks person was what we, you know, Reggie and I were, it was a start. Um, right. Right. So the, the, a lot better response. The, 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 there was a capital plan. Yeah. <laughs> so we have that. Yeah. And I forwarded it to you folks. Yeah. And I saw it. Yeah. That was you know, a wall. Yeah, and they're broken down into phases, so that should be. <coughs> well, I, I think we're there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you're looking for outside That's right. help and you're being stagnant with your own community, that's not much of an incentive for anybody outside of the country. So, we, and honestly, what we get done usually is by our own people. So, um, uh, if we can get them to understand that it's not just for the funding and our volunteers or whatever, and use our own forces to make some improvements, uh, uh, it would have been <laughs> but we can, we can, uh, want to talk about that and, and if we can, we can decide what a, a line that is in the, uh, warning. So, okay. Any, anything else? <coughs> I'm not looking at any way we can find our people. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I see it. Oh. Elizabeth has Elizabeth has uh, uh, other necessary business. Are you back with us? Go ahead, Elizabeth. Okay. So just real quick, um, one, thank you for your um, indulgence on public comment. Um, I just wanted to update you that BHB, if you remember, is the consultant on the um, downtown scoping study will be presenting the three alternatives this week to the steering committee and then we're going to brainstorm ways to get that out to the public given the situation with covid um, we want to get people's input so i'll i'll present that to you or reg and i and neil because we're on the steering committee will present that to you as the trustees i guess at your next meeting and then we'll push it out to the public um, we'll do some maybe outdoor displays. We'll put it on various websites and that kind of thing to get the information out. And I think if you will recall, uh, I think I said it, it at a prior meeting, then we will meet sometime in February, it's looking like, to actually have an in-person meeting whenever it's safe to do that, because I think that's when um, we can come together and, and come up with um, so one one alternative or maybe a commingling of, of bits of the alternatives 
So that, that is moving forward. Very excited to see that later on this week. Um, and part of that is, so I guess I have three things. Um, so as part of that, the, there are uh, several found funders who have come together to put, uh, I believe it's, I'm gonna, it's, it's a wide range. It's either 60,000 or 600,000, but I'm gonna guess it's the 60,000 to fund, uh, it's called Better Places, and it is a grant, and I'll tell you, there is no match. Um, so it'd be straight, but the idea is to take some of those ideas from the alternatives and do a demonstration project um, that will take a, a month or two, so it's not a short one week or two week thing, it would be a couple of months. And we would try some of those things that are common to the, the alternatives that VHB presents over the summer. And then we can do some tweaks, you know, just to try out a few different things, but it, it would be, so what I'd like to do is, um, we would pro the max is 20,000 and I think we would probably go 10 or 20,000. We'll have to do some pricing. The application is due late January. Um, so I, I'm coming before you, I guess, to ask you if it's okay to do that application. I will say it seems like a no brainer to me. There's no match. Um, we'll get some folks together. will give us an opportunity to advance some of those things that come out of, of the, uh, the alternatives from VHB. We did ask them for some quick build ideas and I anticipate that we'll see those. So if some of this money can go toward that. I just think it's a great opportunity, an unexpected opportunity to advance sooner rather than later some of those ideas from the alternatives. So I'll, I don't know if you have any questions or whatever, but um, I can segue into the next one or pause if you have any questions or if you want to say yay to the um, going ahead with the Better Places grant. I hope Neil's not talking to me because I can't hear him. Yeah, you're on mute. Yeah, you're on mute. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, you are muffled, and I don't know if it's because you're wearing a mask. You weren't muffled earlier. Whoop, can hear that. No. Hello. Can you hear me now? I can, thank you. <laughs> okay. The, yes. The uh, goal grant. I goal heard number two. Goal and grant. Yes, go forward with the grant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, so, speaking of going forward, um, the, the RIV, which I know that Lynn talked about, uh, I had talked to Reg and Neil, I'm going to throw them under the bus a little bit. Um, we applied, so I, I sent a letter of intent to apply for Neil Mute, oh, why am I getting an echo? Anyway. Um, I, I did a letter of intent to apply for funds through the USDA Rural Development Rural Business Grant Program. The maximum award is for the Riviera Hotel Phase Two cleanup, which the estimate came in at $30,930. USDA Rural Development would fund 30,000 of that if we go ahead with the application. I just did the LOI, the application is due late to January. There is, no, there is no match, but you would have to come up with the $930. Um, I talked to Greta today and she is setting up an appointment, uh, the pre-application, I got that email today, the pre-application appointment with the Brella, which is the Brownfields revitalization liability something. Um, 
So we'll have that conversation in Reg. I think um, it, I think she sent that to you as well. If not, I'll make sure that you get on there. Um, because if you recall a few months ago, we talked about that and it gives you priority points um, for funding. Greta is gonna, she wants to see if there's petroleum and we have to just read through the work plan to see if there are petroleum issues because she does have petroleum money to do cleanup. It's just a matter of petroleum is an issue. If it is, then she has some money to do the petroleum cleanup. Um, so we may not actually be on the hook for the $930, but we'll, we'll move forward. So um, the other thing is because she's at capacity and Kathy Lavoy, if you're aware, works for regional planning now. Kathy um, will, pro will be our, our contact at regional planning for this project after probably January or February. And you know, if you know Kathy, you know she doesn't play around. So. Um, She'll give us whatever assistance and she's now I will say that she's not as familiar with, with as Greta with the program, but um, she's been doing some reading. So I, I think it's a really good opportunity, but I just wanted to let you know one that the, the project is moving forward a little slow, but you know, we've been slow the whole way through. Um, and then two if if I, I can get you more information but the usda rural development if you want me to go ahead and work on that application due mid-january that could fund thirty thousand of the thirty thousand nine hundred and thirty dollar um phase two phase two work plan sounds good to me yes sounds good yep. okay very good Elizabeth. okay so uh any questions while i'm here any more questions? Uh, I don't. I don't hear any. Okay. Well, uh, then I'm. We uh, thank you for your efforts. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna head off because I think your executive session next anyway. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank Have you. a good night. You too. Thanks. Um, Okay, any other necessary business this evening? Uh, executive session? Yes, personnel. Okay, I'll entertain a, I'll entertain a motion to appoint the executive session to, for personnel. Motion has been made and seconded to go into executive session to discuss personnel. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, uh, we are in executive session. Thank you. Okay.